Hello, welcome to episode 2 of Higurashi When They Cry. Let's just skip the whole intro thing. Well, I already did an intro, but let's just keep um, going. Uh, where was it? Here? Yeah. Load. We were here. By the looks of it, this eraser is normal. No rocks or anything in it. I took a pretty heavy hit from a blackboard eraser, loaded with rocks on my first day. So then why don't you just open the door and let it drop? That's what it is. That's what Satoko was after, making me focus my attention upward, so as I lifted my hand to the door. There were dumb tacks stuck to the sliding door handle with a tape, a frightening trap. A potent, a potent and terrifying trap. But yeah, welcome to episode 2. Yes. Concealed by using the blackboard eraser. An impressive combination, Satoko. But in the end, nothing more than a trivial machinigans of a child. Assured of my victory, I threw the door open and stepped into the room. I found something strange at my ankle. Wait, am I recording? Just check. I get paranoid, okay? I get paranoid if I'm recording or not. Yes, I am. Okay, good, good. I found something strange at my ankle. It was similar to the sensation of a jump rope catching on my leg. By the time I realized she had me, hook, line, and sinker was already too late. I began to fall in an almost picture skew manner. Okay, China, watch out. Instinctively react to Mion's shrill warning. I twisted my body in midair before I landed on the floor. Ow. An inkstone filled to the brim was placed right where I would have landed. I shuddered, imagining the situation had I landed square on it. This is, uh, what's her name again? Uh, who we have here? Fair morning to you, Kei-chan. Kechi-chan. Aren't we a little, li aren't we a lively one this morning? Still sprawled in an awkward position, I was greeted by a mocking voice. That was a step out from your usual traps, Satoko. Also, this is Satoko, okay. I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. You're quite unlucky this morning. You little... Ow. It seemed that I inadvertently sprained my back a little when I landed. Better than landing on that inkstone. Small hand gently rubbed my head. Pain, pain, go away. The small dainty hand continued to gently stroke my head. You didn't sprain your back or anything, did you? If you rub it like this, the pain disappears. I thought about how I thought about asking how rubbing my head would help my back, but I didn't. It's not so much what you, you actually do; it's the thought that counts. Yeah, thanks, Rika-chan. The pain's going away now. Yeah, Rika-chan. Good morning. Ah, stupid police sirens. Goddamn police sirens. Stupid, stupid. Okay, police sirens ruining my video is... Well, the sirens are gone now, so we can continue now. Am I... Yeah, I guess so paranoid. Paranoid about recording. Good morning to you, Rena. Good morning to all. Rika-chan greeted each other with a adorable little bow. It was infectious. Rena, Mion, and I all bowed back. You're such a good kid, Rika-chan. Rika -chan. So much better than Satoko. I glared over in her direction. Satoko was whistling while rather deliberately trying to avoid eye contact. I am the very model of a good girl. A good girl wouldn't set up those not nasty traps. 
nothing but lies and slander. Exactly what proved what? I picked up Satoko by the back of her collar. She looks like a misbehaved cat when I do this, but a cat wouldn't be setting traps. She's much harder to deal with. I'm sorry, try saying that. If you won't say it, I cocked my index finger on, finger on my thumb, letting it tremble as I brought it closer to Satoko's forehead. I'm against violence. You don't even have any proof. Just so you know, my forehead flick really hurts. Can flick plywood right in half. Eek. Stop, get away from me, you beast. Don't say that in a way people will misunderstand. A smell. A smell, what? English. No, 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 English. A small hand tugged on the back of my shirt. She's been lonely since you were gone for two days. Rika-chan really is just so. How can I do anything more after being told that? I gently released my grip on Satoko, who at this point was a ver on the verge of tears. She still had her eyes clamped shut as she had braced herself for the forehead flick. Uh, cry, cry. It doesn't bother me. Why? Uh, you mustn't cry, Satoko. Keep on fighting, yeah. Rika gently panted. Uh, petted, not panted. Oh my god. Petted the head of a prankster friend. You would never guess those two are the same age. I think Satoko could learn a thing or a million from Rika chan. Next time set an even more amazing trap. Wait a minute. As she observed the scene, Rika's expression grew ecstatic as she began to swoon. How Sato Kun is crying. She so cute. You can't take them home. Who but but they're so cute. You can no matter how cute they are. But just for a bit is fine, it's fine. Rena kept a cutesy face even as outrageous ideas spewed from her mouth. Or according to Milan, Rena is ridiculously weak to cute things and always tries to take them home. Object or a person. Stealing is bad. But adapting, uh, abducting people is even worse. Give it up. Then I can just look, just looking. That should be fine, right? Right? Rana swung over Satoko's crying form. If a girl ever goes missing in Hinozawa, I'll be forced to turn Rana into the authorities. <coughs> Ugh. Forgive me, Rana. I'll be sure to bring you carrot packages when they put you away. The teacher's coming. Quickly clean everything up. Sad to call that ink stone is yours, right? Just from the single statement, the entire mood of the room shifted back to normal. The ink stone was bad, but the dumb tacks stuck to the door handle were an evil, even bigger problem. I pulled the tape off carefully, making sure not to skewer myself. Even though Satoko was the one who set it up, everyone had to pick up after her. By the time the teacher entered the room, the bell la bed, what? bed lamb from before had been neatly tidied up. The heck is a bed lamb? Aha, we made it in time. Rise attention. Mion gave out the morning commands. It's difficult being a teacher for all these different grades in one classroom. She has to teach something different to each one. But naturally, she ends up spending all her time with the younger kids. Kids. Rana and me on being the highest grade in the class and uh, mostly doing self study. 
They even end up helping teach the younger kids, so it seems they can never get to their own studies. They're actually quite way, be way they're actually way behind where my studies have progressed to. As a result, I'm pretty much taking over for a teacher and helping me on the Re Reina and me on with their studies. <laughs> You're a pretty good teacher, Kichi Kichi Chan. Catchy kun Yeah, easy to understand. Rena took a Rena took a breather after finishing highlighting an important section. Teaching is making me lose confidence. It makes me aware of how shallow my understanding of the subject is. They say that to teach someone something you need to understand it backwards and forwards. So while you're teaching us you're getting in your own practice. In contrast, this person over here is quite laissez fair what about things. That's a word. For one, isn't she supposed to be a, in a higher grade than me? Love me on this for your own good. If you don't take this seriously, there'll be trouble later on in these with these marks. It's not like I'm aiming to go to a prestigious school. I'll be fine as long as I pick what I need to know for the entrance exams a little at a time. Her staunch defiance was really something else. This was a different type of relaxed oh, oh. <clears throat> than someone who already knew what it was going to be on the entrance exams. Mi-chan Kechi-kun Kechi -kun is doing his best to teach us. We need to try hard too. You're such a good and honest kid, Rena. I'll make sure you guys get accepted into a good school. What? Thanks so much. Especially you, Rena. Private lessons, just the two of us. Private lessons. Puff of smoke shaped like a halo. Popped off out of Raina's head. Exactly what kind of private lesson is she fantasizing about that's making her turn so red? I'd like to hear the play-by-play -play about that next time. While Raina was fl flipping through her, her vocabulary flashcards, she threw out a casual question. So in the city, do you have to study this much? If you don't know at least this much, you can't get into a university. So you study just to get into a university? Well, yeah, basically. While knowing that this stuff won't ever come in handy in the future, I hear you can get into university as long as your attendance is good enough. Really? Study equals entrance exams, having that basic law of the universe so easily overturned send me into a state of shock. State of shock. That is right. There aren't really enough people around here to warrant weeding them off with an exam. If anyone can get into university, then there's no need to be all uptight about this stuff, right? Well, that's true, but you should at least know stuff that's com that's at least know stuff that's common knowledge. This old geezer thinks that instead of wasting time studying pointlessly. You should be spending your precious teen years doing more meaningful things. It was too profound of a statement to simply laugh off. But since it was me on, it probably didn't actually have that deep of a meaning. In place of a team? Ah, uh, okay. The sound of the principal waving a hand bell drifted through the classroom. Okay, Chan, we're done, we're done. It's our wonderful lunchtime. In a complete 180 from her unmotivated state, Mion gave the commands that signaled the end of the morning period. Okay, Chico, let's have, let's have lunch. Oh. <clears throat> My god. I might have been making a very troubled face. Rena smiled brightly at me. Alright, let's eat. 
Oh, these visual novels are so slow. There seem to be different cliches even within the clash. Class, not clash. Fucking class. Most of them were divided up by de gender and age, but our group was different. Our ages were different and we had both boys and girls. So we weren't reserved around each other. This level of openness makes a transfer student like me pretty happy. Rena and Mion pushed their decks, desks together so they were facing each other. At the same time, Satoko and Riko chan, Rika, Rika chan, not Riko, Rika chan were slowly lugging their desks over as well. Kechi couldn't hurry, hurry. Rena waved her chopsticks in an unrefined manner, trying to hurry me along. Unless everyone was together, they wouldn't even open their lunchboxes. Ketchikan's lunchbox is the most absurdly filled with nothing but bread crust like some sort of destitute plebeian. Plebeian. Why don't you just show it to us? Come on. Come now. Even though Satoko was hurling insults at me, she still wouldn't open the lid to her lunchbox until I was there. I pulled out my lunchbox swiftly and dragged my chair over to join the circle. It is hard to keep you waiting. Well then, Representative, me, please give me this, give the signal to start. At first, it was, this was kind of embarrassing, but I got used to it pretty fast. At this point, I probably wouldn't even open my lunchbox if someone else was too slow. Our ages and genders may have all been different, but we are all friends. Let's eat. Sound of our five-part chores echoed perfectly throughout the classroom. Really though, I've gotten pretty used to this group made up of all girls. Of course there are other boys in the class, but they were a lot younger, so they were scared to approach me. Well, that's to be expected. Younger boys just see older boys as scary. Compare that to the girls, well, at least these girls aren't picky. We put all the side dishes in the middle where everybody was free to pick at them. I thought girls would mind sharing a meal with a guy, so I would... Uh, I was a bit flustered joining it. Joining it. However, me noticed that and teased me quite a bit. As the fruit of my efforts, I can now reach over and take size from anybody's lunch. My my isn't Sir Ketchy's lunch extravagant today. My my isn't Madam Satoko's lunch. It's it's extra extravagant as well. The student stuff has a nice look to it, rather, rather trendy guys. Talk about freaking lunchboxes now. Their lunch, talking about their lunch or whatever. Buying into the fight that Satoko was starting, our chopsticks locked in, in a cross counter, stabbing into each other's lunch. My, how delicious. Oh, the star oil is good. The student stuff is good too, even cold. You're seeing my happy face, Rika's expression broke into a little smile. I saved some from dinner last night. By the way, Satoko and Rika-chan's lunches are always the same. Oh. <sighs> Seems that Rika-chan makes it for both of them every day. <sighs> Rika-chan made this too. These days I have mom's home cooking. I was honestly impressed. A carrot rosettes weren't from a mold. They were done hit by hand with a knife. Oh my god, who cares? That's not easy to do. Who cares? I guess Rika Chan is just good at this sort of thing. She's really good at sewing laundry and stuff like that. Amazing, right? Amazing. Rika is quite exceptional in many ways. Oh ho ho ho. That's nothing for you to boast about. Rina is actually better at cooking than I am. Huh? Ah, uh, well, you know. It seemed like the topic of conversation switched to Rena when she wasn't expecting it, making her blush and trip over her words. 
Rena's lunch really was the star of the table. Not only did it look good, it tasted good. It tasted good. Everyone else pulled from Rena's lunchbox constantly. Everyone liked this one so much before, so I made a lot this time. That's good, I hope. I hope. It's got high marks from me on uh, beyond you're taking it too much. Knocking me on chopsticks aside, I reached out trying to secure my own portion. Satoko and Rikachan reached over at the same time and a struggle ensued. Everyone shoveled their mouthful after mouthful while praising it and Rina's lunchbox was soon empty. It was kind of bad that no one thought to leave any for Rina. But Rina seemed rather satisfied as she looked on. How did you like it? Isn't it, it Rina... Rena's an ex extremely good cook too. Quite different from Ketchi san. I said there's nothing to you to boast about. You're not much different from Ketchi Satoko. Can you tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower yet? Satoko's face went pale. Hey hey. Even I can tell the difference between broccoli and cauliflower, Fla cauliflower, not follow. You know, cauliflower. Of course I can. I really can. It's really hard for her to lie. Ketchikan both taste good when they're boiled and topped with mayo, right? You shouldn't be picking on her. Michan too. Rana hurried, trying to follow up and. Mion laughed haughtingly. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay then. As she drew, drew closer to Satoko. Ah. Uh, well, well, just pretend it's a little home accession lesson. Oh my god, I'm tripping over my words. Fuck. Lesson, home lesson. Now then, Satoko, what's this? Mia lifted up her chopsticks. Between them was a piece of green stuff wrapped in bacon. But that's aspera. Mm -hmm. Mia made eye contact with me, and within three seconds, I had Ria Chan's mouth covered. Holding a piece of bacon wrapped asparagus and giving her two choices, she's pretty terrible. Uh, well, uh. The yellow one is cauliflower, no way, the green one is cauliflower. So which hmm. Probably the yellow one is broccoli and the blue one is cauliflower, but the green one is um Do you really know which is which? How about you just give up? I expect not no less from the class representative. The oldest. The way she drives people into a corner just shows how much she how much experience she has. This is just a hunch, but being brought into the Honozaki household must must be quite the other deal. I do know. I really do. Then answer the question. I know, I know. When she finally broke down and started crying. When she acts like this, she actually starts to seem her age. Ah, uh, ah, uh, cute, cute. Rana entered a state of euphoria as Satoko bawled her eyes out. Rana was in a state of, state of bliss as she rubbed her cheek against Satoko's head and smothered her. Really a very content face. One that wouldn't care if the world ended right then, it was that kind of smile. Rena, Rena, Mimi is picking on me. Mimi. <laughs> wow. Well, cute, cute. It's okay, Rena. Oni-chan will take care of all those bad people who tease my little sister. Fish, spoof, bam. It was like a flash of lightning. What, what was that just now? Both of Rena's fish shot out at supersonic speed, striking me on and me squarely in our faces. Before we knew it, Mion and I were sprawling a spread eagle on the floor, staring up at the ceiling with matching welds on our faces. This is the first time you've gotten one, right? 
Instead, she went easy on us. Easy, you mean there's something harder than this? What about me on the night? Slumped our heads back to the floor in our unison. From now on, I'll be careful when I'm when I'm within striking distance of Rena. See, Satoko chan, I took care of them. Mm, so cute. I want to take you home. Making sure Rena couldn't see it, Satoko struck her ta tongue out at us. <laughs> okay. Damn it, all, using Rena like a puppet. Rikatan massaged our bruises without saying a word. No matter what the day had held, the last school bell always came too soon. Our shadows stretched off into the distance. Hey, Ketchikun, tomorrow, tomorrow do you have plans or, or anything? Or anything? Huh? It was such a direct question from Rena, I inadvertently blushed. If it was for a day, day then wouldn't you do it more subtly? Rena saw me lost for words and realized that I misunderstood and turned red as well. Uh, no, I didn't mean it like that, you see. So apparently, that wasn't what she meant. But since it's always f fine when Rena's in a panic, I went along with it a little. Oh really, so it wasn't meant that way. Huh? Huh? Playing it up, I lumped my shoulders, feigning, feigning dejection. Kitchikun, why are you so disappointed? Why? Why? Mi-chan. Ah. Unable to hold any longer, Mion slapped me on the back. I see this old user never knew you never knew you could push her buttons like that. Wah ha ha ha. Ha ha, what, what is it? Miyama's rolling on the floor. Oh wait, oh shit. The heater's going on. No, the heater. Hold on. Okay, the heater finally stopped. That was annoying. I was just recording and the heater goes on and I had to wait until the heater stopped. But, yeah. Ha uh, ha, uh, a joke since when? Since when? Ha, uh, what about halfway through? Halfway? So, Kekun, that means you weren't acting when you blushed at the start? Ha, huh? that means... It was only a moment, momentary lapse, but there was no way Mion would let such a delicate... Deli de delectable detail slip by her. Uh, well, you see, saying anything more was also a bad idea. In my bewildered state, I slipped further into it, an unfavorable position. After that, Mion continued to tease me about it for a while. So, why were you asking if I'm free tomorrow, Reyna? Huh? Oh, what were you, were you talking about? It had been so long that Rena had forgotten. That's how long Neon had teased me. It's just Kitchen. You, you probably can't find your way around Kinozawa by yourself yet, can you? That was true. I hate to say it, but you blindfolded me and spun me around three times. I were playing pin the tail on the donkey. I wouldn't be able to tell up from down here. Yeah, I don't think I know how to get anywhere besides back and forth from school. Yes, yes. So you see, tomorrow we were thinking that Mi-chan and I could escort you through Hinozawa and show you around. Oh. That would be a godsend. Frankly, I was happy about the offer. You'll come, of course, right? If I'm free. You're being invited by a girl, you know. If I'm free. You're probably free anyways. If I'm free. I was being stubborn as not to give a clear yes or no. Even though I thought it was a godsend, I'm too much of a scam to say so up front. 
Tetri Kun, you're not free, perhaps, perhaps. When Mion and I had our rather sour back and forth, ran up, he dove at me hesitantly. Figuring, figuring I'd been a bit too rough on her, I just gave in. Sorry, forgive me, I apologize. I'm free. Great. The tre trepidation, whatever that means, disappeared from Raina's face as it blossomed into a smile. Hey now, hey now. Seems like there's quite a difference between how cold you are to me compared to Raina, isn't there? Seems Mion didn't care for how rude I was to her compared to how quickly I agreed with Raina. But her being annoyed was very interesting. So I pushed Rena, Rena forward, speeding up our pace to leave Mion behind. Let's go, Rena. Maybe it should just be the two of us tomorrow. Leave grumpy old Mion behind. Huh? Well, if Kekun is okay with that, then. I'm the one who came up with the idea to take him around. Don't ignore me. Kekchi. Marabara. Maybara. Ah. It'd be great if the two of us could go on a picnic together. Should we bring a basket, Rena? If we're bringing a basket, I'll make all the food per maybe, maybe. Don't you ignore me too, Rena. I'll tell everyone that you two disappeared into the hotel district together. Well then, I'm going home right now to start making it. Tomorrow is going to be so fun. Later, Ketri Khan me me chan by Rena bounced off like she was walking on the moon. After the dust settled, all that was left was me standing next to me on, sprawled out on the ground. There was a welt on her face. Are you alright? There was over two meters between you guys. Since you came, they've become sharper. This old Jesus body can't handle it. Maybe it'd be easier if you stop saying stuff that makes Reyna want to hit you. Or else this will end up being Mion's slapstick comedy hour. If that happened, if that happened the results might be fatal. Don't feel bad, Mion. You're probably the only one who can dodge her jabs. It felt like it was her me, though. It could be that we were both hanging out with an unrivaled martial arts master. Maybe someday we'll see her debut Debut, debut in an extreme contact sport. You can't lose to Rena. You need to train up and have a rematch. Kick, kick, and you should. Soul G's are all root for you. Mion and I reaffirm our determination to discover a way to counter Rena's infallible technique. Okay. Ah, oh, so much reading out loud. Ah. Uh. reading out loud. My mouth is tired. I took it a little too easy on the morning of my day off. I was totally late. Today was the day Rena and Mian were going to show me around Hinazu Hinamizawa. Rena and Mian were already waiting at the meeting place. Okay, chan you're late. Sorry, sorry, the show I was watching that tonight was really interesting, blame that. Oh, so that's your excuse for being late and keeping two girls waiting? Michan, you just got here yourself. Ah, uh, last night's episode of A Day in the Life of was interesting, wasn't it? She was just as guilty as me. Rena was carrying a pretty heavy looking hand handbag. What is that? Mian answered my unspoken question with a wink. That's right, Rena really did make a picnic. K 
Okay, John, after you left, Rena pulled out all the stops. It's not like I forced her to do it. It was nothing, so don't worry about it, okay? She's been like that since last night, you know. Can you take responsibility for this? Alright, alright, I am a man after all. I'll take responsibility. Huh? Responsibility for what? For what? As we both turned around slowly to look at Rena, our gazes drifted downwards to the massive handbag she was carrying. It didn't seem logical or feasible that it would be entirely filled with lunch boxes. Except this was being never talked about here. About two kilos, I guess. When Rena was picking it up, I could see she was struggling a bit. I say five. They're exaggerating. Kitchen is a boy after all. I thought he could probably eat a lot, so I made a lot, okay? Ah, uh, let's get going. He hope. Just from the way she was lifting it up, I couldn't believe the only things in there were lunch boxes. Correction, I say five kilos too. I'll help out, but all of it needs to be eaten. Won't forgive you if you make Rena sad, okay? The only thing I could do at the moment was exercise a bit to make myself hungrier. Having finished with the pleasantries, we began our leisurely stroll, a carefree walk bathed in, in the gentle morning sunlight. I couldn't have even imagined something so wholesome existed during my time in the city. Oh. <clears throat> oh. These were the boonies after all. No slovenly desk jockeys trudging to work on the weekends out here. It really was a nice place, peaceful and quiet. As sparsely populated as the village was, you could still run into the people just by walking around. Ah, good day. Good day. Oh, you would be Marlboro Kun, I believe. My two companions exchanged greetings with everybody we ran across. All these passerbyers even knew my name. When did I become this famous? The past three people, when all three of them knew me, I began to feel a little paranoid. Ah, uh, it's, it's a bit sad to say. Everybody knows everybody here, since there are so people, so few people, so few people here in Hinozawa. So that means, so that means when an unfamiliar familiar face walks by, they automatically assume it's that Maribara fellow who just walked, uh, who just moved here. Yeah, that's how it works out. Uh, my bara, my bara. Okay. Yeah, it was a process of elimination you could only pull off in a place like this, but it was quite effective. From now on, I better make sure to maintain a good reputation. Today, I'm discovered accidentally gawking at, at a dirty magazine in the bookstore. I can expect all the villagers labeling me as a lech by the next day. Hinozawa is not to be trifled with. That's not the end of this nightmare. Of course I know them. The first people we met was old man Takizo from the Maki Makino bike shop. His hobbies are bonsai and playing the flute. Next we met the grocer's second son, Daisuki kun. His hobbies is sharpshooting and he got hopes to be an ace sniper in the future. And the person we just met was Mio-san, the nurse from the clinic. Her hobbies are bird watching and photography. You know the names of everyone we pass by, and even their profiles. Seeing my surprise, Mio and Rena exchanged looks and burst into laughter. Well, yeah, we're not like the city where people hardly know their neighbors. Then let's try it out. You there? Who am I? Aha, uh -huh. you're Kichi Mabara. You say some mean things, but you're actually not a kind, nice person. A kind, a shy, a kind, shy person. It's been three weeks since you transferred here. Your hobby is taking afternoon naps. Lately, you switched over to wearing boxers, didn't you? That's enough, that's enough. Boxers, enough of that. Apparently, there's absolutely nothing you can, you can keep hidden here. Hinozawa is not a place to be trifled with. This feels more like the guys are, guys are showing me off rather than showing me around. That's right. 
We're parading around like this after all. Don't you all think so too? That Kate Chan is fitting right in here in Hinozawa. The population in Hinozawa is shrinking. We will just welcome anybody who's new here. I thought about brushing it off with something to affect the effect of your kidding me, but I held back. Had I ever agreed to someone who just moved into a city like this before? Thinking about that made me believe what they said wasn't a joke at all. We passed another person. Of course, we were called out again to, the same way. Oh my good day. It's wonderful seeing you getting along. This lady here is Fujishi-san. Good day. Oh my, my, my Baraka. How wonderful for you having a lovely girl on each arm. How are you? Getting used to life here? Instead of regurgitating a prepared response like I would have in the city, I responded with an empathetic nod. An emphatic nod. The old woman chuckled, voicing her appreciation of how energetic I was. Good. As I looked back over to Rena and Mion, they gave me a wink. So now then, about time to have lunch, maybe, maybe. Rena's brilliant smile, smile signaled the approach of an event that both Mion and I were trying to forget. We both looked at each other. I'm a man, I'll do what I can, but it's just too much. It's fine, kid chan Leave it to this old man. Mian has never seemed as reliable uh, reliable as she does now. Right now. I expect no less from the class representative. Rena, if we're going to eat, we might as well go somewhere with a good view. Uh, yes. Good idea, I agree. Rena nodded her head, head happily in response to Mian's proposal. Crashing to the top of the stone stairway, a shrine straight out of my imagination appeared before us. It was worn down a bit through the years, but the fallen leaves had been swept up, making it a tidy feeling. This year is a Frudiva shrine. It's probably the place with the best view around. This place, be sure to remember it. On our next break, a festival will be held here. Uh, isn't it a bit too early in the season for a festival? The Watashinagi isn't a summer festival. Long ago, it used to be a celebration of the end of winter. Okay, I think we're going to end it here. Quick save. I'm going to quick save again. Again, just to make sure. Right, okay, one more time. <laughs> okay. going to end it here. Oh, tired. Okay. Bye-bye.